because he inhabits our worship. He seeks those that will worship him. Can I have an amen? Amen. Praise God. You want to sing that? You want to sing that again? Go ahead. You got there? Go ahead. Praise God. This is a powerful song. And um, glory to God. Thank you. 
God, and tonight as we come, we humble ourselves under thine hand tonight, O oh God. And we come to lift up your name and to exalt you. Lord, we want to be a blessing to heaven, God. We, Lord, we know, God, that uh, the times are different, difficult. But I believe, God, that the praise that goes up, the glory comes down. Lord, tonight we come to just magnify thee. For there's none like on the day, there's none above thee. Thou art the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the fairest of ten thousand. You are the bright and morning star. God, tonight, Lord, our hunger and our desire is to be in your presence. To feel, O oh Lord, the anointing of your sweet Holy Spirit. And Lord God, to feel your touch upon our lives in Jesus' name. Draw us in tonight, God. We may be few in number. But Lord God, we plead that the power of your Holy Spirit is present. Hallelujah. To minister to your people. For those that have their tuned in on the internet this evening, God, we ask you, Lord God, wherever they're at, let them feel the power of the anointed Holy Spirit. Lord, touch them in a way like they've never been touched before. Lord God, let them search their souls. It was there this was their last day on planet Earth. Where would their next stop be? That's something you just don't want to think, or maybe, or could be. You want to know. You want to know so salvation. You want to know so destiny. Hallelujah. So, Lord, help us tonight to magnify you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. When everything else fails, when everybody else fails. Come on, people. Amen. Jesus won't ever fail you. Give him glory tonight. 
Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We worship you tonight, God. Hallelujah. The closer you come to him, the littler your battle becomes.
they were hopeless. The one they loved has died. He's no longer in the tomb. And they were standing in that place. And this must have been a little bit of what they felt. They were all together in one place. In the upper room. Pray for God's power upon high. They were waiting for the promise made not so long ago. Jesus said that He would set their souls on fire. Suddenly the sound.
cabin fever. Nobody knows you're all alone. You need to realize that you're not alone. There's somebody right with you. And I encourage you tonight in this service just to take a moment out and close your eyes and just giving God glory for being there for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing this song. Amen. It's exactly what we need to be doing. All of the church tonight. You're home tonight. You need to lift your hand. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm not ashamed. Of, I want to 
want to thank you for giving me a new life, God. For pulling me out of the dirt and the muck and the morrow of this world. And for saving my soul. Lord, I want to thank you. For I love you. Glory to God. Give God. his ears. Amen. Well, that's what we want to do. We want to continue to worship. Can I have an amen? amen. Get serious about this thing. What is it going to take to bring America to its knees? That would be my question. And uh, because we're not moved by nothing. Hollywood has hardened us. There was a time when you heard tell of an accident in your community or a tragedy. It touched the community and shocked the community and the tears People gather around anymore the way things have been in this nation, the way Hollywood has done us. You can see blood running down the yellow line on the hard road that don't move nobody. Uh, we've become hard and hardened to life. And um, of course, uh, life has not, has, it seems like in, our, in our people's lives anymore, it's not as valuable as it used to be. Come on now. And... Uh, I want to go back just for a moment to see again to Luke chapter 5. Familiar passage just for a couple minutes this evening. And uh, glory to God. Luke chapter 5. I want you to know something tonight. You're on the winning side. Amen. I snuck to the back of the book and checked it out. And praise God, we're, we're in victory lane. Amen. And um, no matter what they think in D.C., what the news forecasters say, they don't know nothing when it comes to the spiritual things of the Most High God. But I want you to know that we are on the winning side. And then in verse 17 of chapter 5 of Luke, do you have it tonight? Amen. Is that it came to pass on a certain day as... He was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. It hasn't changed any. The power of the presence of God is still here to heal. Amen. Still just as powerful as it was 2,000 years ago. Amen. Amen. That's why the word says that he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was up on him, by whose stripes we were and are healed. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. It hasn't changed. And behold, men brought in a bed of a man which was taken with the policy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, I'm believing God that's going to happen again. Amen. I'm believing the multitude, the crowd is going to be 
That way again inside the churches where the gospel was being preached. It said that they went up on the housetop and they let him down through the town with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. First major healing. Always remember that. The major healing in a person's life is not a physical one, it's a spiritual one. When you're healed spiritually, things will begin to change in you physically. Is anybody here tonight? Amen. Hello. And the scribes and the Pharisees begin to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said unto them, Why reason you in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, Your sins be forgiven, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that you will know that the Son of Man had power upon earth to forgive sin, he said to the, unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, Arise, take your bed up, your couch, take, your, uh, take up your couch and go into your house. And immediately, say immediately in your mouth. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that which he lay on and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they glorified God. Hello. And were filled with fear saying, we have seen strange things today. I want you to know church, there's going to be some strange things the church is going to see again. I believe we're going to see things that we have never experienced, we've never been in the midst of again, and it's going to, it's going to bring, I'm telling you right now, the eyes of the Christians of these last days open in a greater measure than ever before. But I want you to know, if there's ever been a time right now to encourage the church to rise up and walk, it's time. Don't just lay down and play dead. Don't let the devil tell you it's over with. Don't let the news uh, reporters tell you it's over with. Don't let the leaders of this nation tell you it's over with. I'm telling you right now, the God in whom we serve Amen. is greater than what's hitting this nation. Amen. The God in whom we serve is greater than every virus, any plague. Amen. And I'm telling you, I'm encouraging you tonight to rise up. Make a stand against it. You say, Pastor, how can I make a stand against it? The greatest stand you can make against it is to be a worshiper of God. To lift up your hands and magnify the King of Kings Amen. and the Lord of Lords. To take time out of your day. Have a prayer time. I've always preached to you about that secret place where you get alone with God. Get on your knees. And say, God, I missed the mark. And I'm sorry, but Lord, I want to feel your touch. I want you to give me an understanding heart. I want you to guide me on this mission that you call me on, this direction you call me on. Now, I'll tell you right now, when the church starts encouraging people to rise up and quit laying down, rise up and start walking, rise up and start facing the things that touch their lives and comes against their lives, I'll tell you there's going to be victory in their lives. Amen. God is going to honor them. Amen. God is going to give you a supernatural strength. Amen. God is going to give you a supernatural ability. Amen. And God's going to give you a supernatural understanding. Amen. I encourage you not in here, no matter what's going on, rise up. And when you encourage people, listen, to remove the symbols of hindrance, you know, the different things in their lives that stop them. You might as well just say amen when I say this tonight. Too many people have too many symbolizing things in their life that stop them from being involved with God. It could be a boat, it could be a camper, it could be something or other else, I don't know. It could be race cars, it could be, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we, it's time to get rid of the idols in America. Amen. America is, is full of idols. Amen. I've always said over the years that the your big ball stands, which now they're they're talking about, boy, they're wanting to get them open first. They're wanting to get them open first, you know. I'll tell you right now, they have been the Trojan horse of this nation. Amen. It's brought our people into a place where we're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, it is no wonder We've got a plague in our land. Amen. I mean, we've glorified Hollywood and their immoral movies. And uh, and, and uh, on Sunday, you know, you'll see stadiums, ball stadiums with 60 and 70, 80,000 back full. And the churches across this country empty. I want to tell you, I believe we've upset our Redeemer. Somebody amen. say amen. Yeah. That's time, listen, it's time to come back to God. Forgive us. Amen. 
What is wrong with us? Yeah. We're to be an example of the next generation. Yeah. Amen. We're to be an example of our children, yeah. our grandchildren, yeah. great-grandchildren. Yeah. Lord, forgive us because our example has been a very poor one. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to encourage people to give the, the, the hindrances out of their life and to get the idols out of the world, that what life. And uh, when uh, uh, we provide an opportunity for Christians to be the witness that God has called them to be, and not be afraid to. Don't be, don't be afraid to tell people about Jesus. Don't be afraid to witness to them. And uh, when the church does what God has called them to do, I think we're going to see a healing in our land. Amen. One of the first things he called the church to do, not the worldly. He says, if my people, Amen. which are called by my name, he's not talking about the bar room bunch now, the dance hall bunch now. He's talking about the church. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and repent. Then there'll be healing in the land. This is why I'm sad. The judgment's going to start in the house of God. And I believe we've got off in left field so far over the years that there's too many things goes on in the house of God that's not of God. Amen. Hello. And of course, when we obey God, then uh, we're going to find out that uh, people are going to rise up against you. I mean, when he when he healed this man, the first people that rose up against him was religious leaders. This is blasphemy. Who can uh, who can forgive sin but God? He was standing right there in the midst. They didn't even recognize him. My, the Bible says you'll know his voice, and the voice of a stranger you'll not follow. Amen. You'll recognize him. If God was to speak to you in the midst of the night, would you recognize him? If God was to speak to you, would you know it was his voice? I'll tell you, years ago, I'll never forget that uh, I was just young in the Lord, just starting to serve the Lord. And uh, I always told the Lord, and I still do today, God, please, when you speak to me, speak to me loud enough I can hear you. Get my attention. Speak to me in a way that I don't miss you. And uh, Dixie always told me, she said, I don't understand why you can't hear me in the chair next to you, but you can hear a goose five miles away. And uh, could be selective here. But I've always told the Lord, you know, my wife says I'm deep, but Lord, I'm asking in Jesus' name, give me spiritual ears that I can hear from heaven. Amen. Hear what the Holy Spirit's speaking to me. This is what I'm saying. Years ago, I remember I, I told the story before, but I was out in my backyard, I'd run the weed eater. And I'd been praying, as God, Speak to me and speak to me in a way that I hear you. I hear your voice. And uh, I would run the weed eater up on the side of the hill. I'll never forget. And all at once God spoke to me while I was running that weed eater. And I was in weeds about that high, cutting them off. And God spoke to me and, and, I, and, and all he said was, Danny, just that's it. And I stopped in my tracks and I looked around and I thought, Dick, you'd harm me. She wasn't harm me. And there wasn't nobody around me. And I went a little bit further back to her again, Denny. And I stopped again and looked all around. And I didn't, I didn't see anybody or anything. And I thought, uh, it has to be God. And of course, I've often said about how Samuel, you know, uh, uh, you know, I said to him, he said, when you hear the Lord, say, speak, Lord, your servant hear it. But inside the body of Christ today, we hear it like this. Uh, Listen, Lord, thy servant speaketh. Hello. And, uh, but I, I said, uh, uh, Lord, I said, uh, I, I, I hear you, but I, I can't hear what you're, you're telling me. You know? I went a little bit further, I mowed a little bit further. The next time he spoke to me, it shook things. And uh, he spoke to me, and all, at the same time he spoke to me, he gave me a vision. And of course, when I got the vision, I knew exactly then. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't no mystery to me. And, so I took the weed eater down and put it away and, and uh, went in and told Dixie, I said, I've got to go to a place to see a gentleman and I don't know what's going on, but God wants me to go. And uh, I said, I'm not even sure where the guy lives. And, and of course, Dixie told me where they lived at, where the family lived. And to make a long story short tonight, I'm not telling the whole story, but before the night was over, uh, a, a man got saved and God turned his family around and uh, at the same time, uh, I mean, God had the heart me to get his attention. Um, we live in a noisy world. Amen. Yeah. Hello. I often think.
think about, you know, the disciples and Jesus. I mean, they went through the hills, Galilee, and down to the river Jordan. Didn't have a jam box on their shoulder. Can I have an amen? You know, like the young people today, didn't have the music turned up. It don't matter where you go anymore. Everybody got music turned up as high as they ain't turned. Our whole nation, deep. Hello. And uh, you go into businesses anymore instead of having quiet dinner music. If you want to sit down and eat, if you're, you know, when you could. Well, I, I was always a kind of, I like, I like a little bit of real quiet, just like dinner music, just instrumental music behind me. But man, I've, been, I've walked in places and literally told the waitress, I said, you go back and tell them, turn that music down or I'm not going to finish my meal or pay for my meal. I didn't come here to be harassed. And, uh, but uh, that's, that's the way that our nation is anymore. Everybody's got to have something pounding in your ears. And it's pounding so loud, it's pounding like the voice of God. Amen. You get in the cars, and my Lord, you go in town and set by a red light, and there'll be a car, six, seven cars behind you. Boom, 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 boom. Your cars are shaking. You know? Well, they couldn't hear a stick of dynamite go off. Hello, little one, God. But that's the way we are anymore. But I'm telling you, if there's ever been a time, we need to encourage the church. Get in a secret place. Get in a quiet place. Get before God. Get on your knees and call out to him. And then don't just do all the talking. Do a little listening. Can I have an amen to that? God is wanting to speak to you. Amen. He's wanting to give you some insight, some, some instructions about life. Praise God. So I encourage you now, not only just to be an encouragement to other people, but I'm encouraging you tonight that God is wanting to use you. He's wanting you to be a witness. He's wanting to give you some instructions. Praise God. Of course, in the midst of all this, you know, it only works when we obey. Uh, the Bible tells you, Peter spoke of it in Acts, it's better to obey God than man. In other words, if you're always concerned about what men will think, or people will think, you'll never do anything for the Lord. Amen. If you're always worried about people, you're done right now. I'm telling you, you need to make a stand for what God wants you to do. Can I believe in tonight? Amen. That's what I'm saying. Of course, there's going to be the spiritual trials of everyday life. And I... I I think that's where so much of this has been misled now. I mean, we're, we're centering this thing in as being a physical attack. Well, it is a physical attack on physical bodies. But I'll tell you right now, this is a spiritual trial, too, for this nation. And I pray to God that we don't fail. This is what I'm saying. But it's for many Christians. You know, I, I believe a lot of Christians are going to throw their hand in the air and, and, uh, and just quit going to church, quit praying, quit reading the Bible. Just do their thing. I, I'll be honest with you. Just, you might as well stay sweet with me tonight. But a lot of Christians just look for a, a place. You know, uh, praise God I don't have to go to church this morning. We're not allowed to. You know. Praise God I don't have to go to church this morning. A lot of Christians are like that. Looking for any excuse. Oh, i seen a snowflake. No, it wasn't a snowflake. It was a blossom off a pear tree. Go to one the church. Hello. But looking for any excuse. And stay home, not worship God. Don't get mad at me tonight, just stay sweet with me. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing is happening on you. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. I don't want to miss it when he reveals his glory. I don't want to miss it, listen, now, when he comes back to take his people home. I don't want to miss it, listen, when he brings this last day revival into this nation. Amen. I want to be involved with that. I want to be a part of that. Hallelujah. I, want to, I want to know, praise God, I'm going to experience some of that. And of course, uh, I just there's question on the fact of whether it's going to be the second awakening or the third awakening. I just don't care as long as it's an awakening. Amen. As long as it wakes up this country. Where the churches fill up again. When preachers start preaching hellfire and brimstone and start preaching the gospel. Can I have an amen? amen. And uh, start preaching. There's a way that seemeth right. The ways there are are the ways of destruction and death. And start preaching that. He said, uh, praise God. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Let him be, let him glorify God on this behalf. In other words, God needs to be glorified no matter what. I mean, in all things, give thanks to the Lord. 
You say, Pastor, how in the world can I give thanks for God and what's going on? Well, thank him that you still have hold of his hand. Amen. Amen. Thank him he's not left or forsaken you. Amen. Thank him he's still providing provisions for you, making a way for you. Amen. Come on, people. Amen. I mean, there's, there's always reason to thank God. Mm -hmm. I never sit down at my table that I don't take a moment out. When I, I, I say blessings over food, Lord, I thank you. Not only did I have food, I ask you to bless it. I thank you I have a table to set it on. Amen. A roof over my head. Amen. Running water in the kitchen. A refrigerator to keep our food in and keep it to spoil. Thank you, Lord, that I'm able to eat and protect the food. Because I know people that can. Hello. I, we have so much to thank God for. Amen. And yet we, we seem to neglect doing that. And I believe that's what's when God is calling the church back to being a thankful church. And a church that... that uh, that um, is not afraid to give God the honor and the praise that he deserves. Can I have an amen tonight? Amen. Glory to God. And uh, I want you, uh, Lisa, to do us that uh, healing song you had on there a few moments ago. You have it there in front of you? Praise God. Amen. You're out there listening in tonight. You're going through physical battles. I don't know what you're battling with, but whatever it is, I'm telling you, we have a God that can heal you. He's still in the healing business. Amen. Hallelujah. He's there right in your house tonight.
every assignment of the all you, every fire, every infection right now. We curse tumors and we command them to dry up. Cancer to leave bodies right now. In the name of Jesus. For diabetes to leave right now. Jesus' name. Heal them from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Victory in your life. You get up and you start a new day tomorrow with a shout of your voice. You'll be singing louder than birds. Hallelujah. To God, I just want to thank you and praise you. Their battle's not 
not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and the powers of darkness. A demon force is trying to take over this nation in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, go with your people tonight. Watch over and protect them. Bless them as they go away tonight and leave them to home. Put your angels around their homes, around their vehicles, around their children. No harm would come to them. Let them know that the hand of the living God is up on them. And Lord, that you're only just a breath away. Reveal yourself to your people. In Jesus' name. And all God people said, Amen. Amen and amen. Appreciate you all. God bless you. Have a beautiful week. Get up in the morning. Get up in the morning thanking God, praising God, and worshiping God.